you want to learn how to avoid big, fat medical malpractice lawsuits, then keep watching this video because I'm going to go over some tips to really help you lawsuit proof your notes. So let's get straight into it. But to start, I want to remind you that when you write a medical note, you're actually creating a legal document that can be used for you or against you in the court of law. And when you're treating very complex patients, you need to make sure your notes are not just adequate, but also informative. So with that said, let's get into tip number one. The first tip is simple. Avoid cut and paste templates for complicated patient complaints. It is one thing to use a quick physical exam template for a URI or a UTI, but you cannot do a pre-filled exam for a chest pain or abdominal pain patient because these complaints require more detailed HPI and they likely involve multiple organ system. And in my experience, I found that a cut and paste template, they tend to have a lot of errors and these errors are very easy to identify in the SOAP note. I've seen chest pain patients with pre-filled extremity exams that says strong pedal pulses bilateral lower extremity but the patient only has one leg. Does that even make sense? If you as the main provider didn't know that your patient only had one leg, did you even examine the patient? That's exactly the sort of argument a lawyer will make to discredit you as a competent provider. They will argue that you are reckless in your documentation and therefore you are reckless in how you examine and treat your patients. Don't get me wrong, I love templates and they're really useful in certain scenarios not for complicated patients. So don't let a focused template keep your differential too narrow or cause you to overlook part of your workup. The next tip is to be specific in your note. Quantify everything. I always laugh when I see a note that says symptoms started after the patient got back from vacation. I have no idea when the patient went on vacation, when they came back from vacation, and neither would anybody else reading that note. And when I see symptoms start on Thursday, what does that even mean? If I read this note a year later in court, how will I know when Thursday was? When I'm reading a note, I want to know how long my patient has had their symptoms. Have they been short of breath for seven days and the fever started today? Or did this all start at seven days ago at the same time? It is also not helpful to document patient's last meal was breakfast. Does that mean that patient ate breakfast for dinner or maybe for that patient, their breakfast was at noon? So it is better to say the patient last eight, six hours ago. You should be able to look back at the chart in six months and have a clear picture of the timeline and progression of that patient encounter. This next one is very important. In every note, you should document that you thoroughly discuss the treatment plan with your patient and your patient verbalized understanding. Here's an example. You see a patient, let's say her name is Sarah, she's 63 years old and you diagnose her with pneumonia, send her home with some antibiotics. A week later, the patient ended up hospitalized for complicated pneumonia because she never took the antibiotics. Sarah ends up in a hospital for a month and then rehab for two months. And a year later, she files a medical malpractice lawsuit against you. Ugh, that happens. Her lawyer will try to blame you and say it's your fault that you didn't give her clear instructions on how to manage her diagnosis. And it's your fault that Sarah ended up in the hospital because the lawyer will argue that Sarah was hard of hearing. She didn't understand your instructions or that she's very forgetful and she might be in the early stages of dementia or maybe English wasn't her first language and she didn't understand the severity of her pneumonia diagnosis. So there's a hundred reasons why this is your fault. And if you don't over document your note in a court of law, this very well can appear to be your fault. And this happens far too common in medicine. I recommend always writing, discuss your precautions with patient, and then make sure you list out the specific symptoms that you discuss with a patient that warrant a follow-up visit. And then you wanna end with follow-up if symptoms persist or worsen. And you add patient express and verbalize understanding. Here's an example. Discuss your precautions with patients such as, but not limited to, shortness of breath, chest pain, fever, chills, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, and headache. Patient advice to follow up to clinic or ER if symptoms persist or worsen. Patient agrees with treatment plan and express and verbalize understanding. Bam! In three short sentences, you covered your entire butt. Your butt is covered. 
That's it. You're a good provider, so make sure you show that on paper. Next up, always chart a differential diagnosis for those complex cases. I get it. You're busy and you want to rush and finish your notes and go home, but it takes five minutes to document your differential. This shows the specialist and or the lawyer that you thought about a ruptured diverticulitis, but at the time of presentation, the patient's findings were more consistent with constipation. This is also a place where you can discuss your doubts if you have any about the diagnosis or the treatment or the direction that you anticipate things going. You can say in your notes that symptoms expected to improve or resolve in two or three days and if they don't, patient advised to return to the clinic or the ER for further evaluation. Or you can say appendicitis and diverticulitis was considered in the differential diagnosis but at this moment, patient's exam and findings were consistent with constipation. Now, before I move on to the next tip, if you want to learn more about all the things that they didn't teach you in PA school, then be sure to click the link below to my website at yourpamentor.com. There is a free, F-R-E-E, -E, free resume writing guide and template to help you land your dream job. And I also have a podcast for all new grad PA content. And on my website, you can learn more about the Happy PA Academy. It is an online course where we teach PAs how to find your ideal job, read your contract, negotiate salary, and fast track your way to wealth through paying off your student loan debt and, and investing because being a financially independent PA is a better PA. So click that link below. Okay, okay, back to our tips. The next tip is to always document your consults and your references. If you spoke to a surgeon, document the name of the surgeon the date and time of the consult and what the consensus was for that consult. And if you discuss a case with your supervising physician, make note of that in your chart. Just say something simple like, I consulted with Dr. So-and-so and he agrees with my assessment and plan. As an urgent care provider, sometimes I like to call the ER doctor and see a consult before I send the patient over there. And I would document that Dr. So-and-so said this, this, and this, and we agreed this, this, and this. And sometimes I don't always agree with their plan. So I would write down exactly what he said, what I'm thinking, and why I saw a second opinion or why I choose to go a different route. As long as everything is documented and somebody can understand your thought process, that is all that matters. The next tip seems pretty simple too, and it is, but it needs to be said. Avoid abbreviations whenever possible. Remember, your notes are not written for you. They are written for everyone else who comes after you. The nurse, the specialist, the urgent care provider, the surgeon. And they will all know or understand your shorthand or your abbreviation. So spell it out. SOB and BKA may be common lingo between you and I, but maybe not the dermatologist or the medical assistant who might be reading this note next. And also, do not be stingy with your words. If you do an exam of a system, chart it, especially when the findings are normal. Normal is important information and helps us establish a baseline for if and when there is a complication or a change in status down the road. When in doubt, reference it out. It is perfectly normal to question your assessment and plan, especially if this is a complicated patient with an unusual presentation or if there's a new protocol at your clinic, or if there's a new recommendation that was released a few days ago. If you're in doubt of your assessment and plan, document the literature that supports your decision making. For example, when we started this whole pandemic, there were no COVID experts. Nobody, nobody knew how to treat really sick COVID patients. There were no guidelines in place, and some providers were sending every single patient with COVID to the ER, while others we're just giving them outpatient antibiotics to treat for possible COVID pneumonia. Because medicine is ever changing with new data emerging every day, it is perfectly normal to change your treatment plan. So you can say something like this on your note. On January 4, 2021, the current COVID recommendation is A, B, and C. So if someone looks back at this treatment plan a year later, they can't say, well, why didn't you start X, Y, Z treatment? Well, because that wasn't the recommendation at that time. To simply do this, cite the relevant data or the study or any kind of guideline in your note documenting the related treatment choice. And another quick tip for you. Document that you discuss all the diagnostic and treatment options with the patient and that you allow the patient to make their own clinical decision based on the information that was presented to them. But 
Be sure that you state in your note that you thoroughly discuss all the risk and benefits for the chosen treatment. And again, it is very important to note that the patient expressed and verbalized understanding. This tip is quick, simple, and easy, but it is very important to mention it again. Okay, so now you learn how to make sure your documentation is lawsuit proof and provide the necessary information for the rest of the medical team to perform our job optimally. So let us know if you have any comments, any questions, and if these tips actually improve your documentation skills and let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.